Hallelujah. 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 Baruchatai Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. Leka alam asher nataha Torah wakayim. Blessed be you, Yahuwah, and blessed be your name, Yahuwah, sovereign of the universe, the giver of the Torah and life. We humbly become, come before you this evening, first and foremost, to say Torah Yah. Torah Yah for the breath of life, for the opportunity to gather again as men, as brothers, as your children, as your set apart ones, that we may build and discuss and just gather amongst ourselves that we may be able to grow together, that we may understand, gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through the experiences that you have blessed us with, that we may share those amongst each other, that we may become better stewards and better servants to you, that we may be better representations of your name. Thank you for the provision that you have provided our families. Thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives, knowingly and unknowingly. For we know that we are unable to do certain things for ourselves, but we know that you're able to open up all doors and create new opportunities, even when we think there are none. So we thank you for the things that you're doing in our lives, even at this very minute. May you forgive us for any misdeeds, for anything that we have done knowingly or unknowingly against your will, against your Torah. May your wrath not consume us, but may your mercy be upon us that your spirit may guide us, that we may realign and reconnect and readjust, that we may be in the perfect will to do exactly that you desire us to do, that we may be the helping hand, the listening ear, that we may be the proper representation, that we may be all that you called us to be from the beginning. May you be with each and every man on this call and be with those who are not even able to make it. Be with your people as we continue to struggle, as we continue to move forward, move forward in righteousness, move forward to knowing your Torah, that we may be able to teach the younger generations as well as teach those who may not know your word. May you be with me this evening that I may bring forth what it is by your spirit, that I may not bring anything that is against your will, but that I may bring it forth in a way that is digestible, that it may be easy for anyone to listen and understand, that we may walk accordingly in righteousness. With all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our might, we honor you, we glorify you, and we magnify your Kodesh name. Blessed be you, Yehovah. Blessed be your name, Yehovah. And blessed be the man or woman who comes in your name in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. 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 Selah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, my team. Hallelujah. It, it, it's shalom, great to shalom. be amongst my brothers once again. Um, I, I'm not going to be before you long. Um but I, I am grateful just for the opportunity. I'm thankful for, you know, a lot of things. This summer, you know, I've had my, my two sons and they're going through those teenage years, 14 and 16. And I've got to have a lot of conversations over these past couple of weeks with them. Some about life, some about, you know, this way of life, this walk, and the reason why I walk this path and my hopes and my dreams for them, you know, not to force anything upon them, but for them just to have a relationship with the creator for themselves. And that is one of the reasons why this lesson is going to be a little bit different because it, it's definitely going to take participation. This is going to be more of a discussion because me and my sons, We've been talking a lot about, you know, why things are. And when we watch certain things or when we listen to certain things, I always pause it, you know, say this happens because of this. This is happening because of this. So there's, there's no confusion. So today I wanted to bring forth this discussion on solutions. Right now, there's a lot of different things happening. 
since the beginning of 2024, I, 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 I don't even know where to begin, but there's been a lot of things about exposing and there's a lot of things about revealing the, the truths behind the things, even in certain documentaries, we're seeing that they're really trying to bring a lot of things that have been in the dark out. And we're seeing a lot of the problems in our in our community, rung in the monks. We see them daily in our, you know, social media, in our communities, in our congregation. And these are the things that Lockley. Um talk to mommy. So these are the things that we as men we have to be the ones in the forefront to start finding out the solution to these problems. We cannot just be listening to them or contributing to them, but not actually having a solution for them. So as Israelites, as men, as leaders of our homes, of our congregations, as in our community, we are called to uphold Torah principles and guide our community through the challenges we face. Our community is currently grappling with a range of issues that require our collective wisdom, strength, and unity to address effectively. Um, during this discussion, I would like us to discuss various scenarios if we have the chance to go through all of them, but I do want to go at least through two of them that will highlight the critical areas of concern and explore solutions rooted in our faith and our values. The various, um, I have six scenarios. I, I know we're not going to probably get through all six, but if it's the most highest will, we will. But the six scenarios is the first one is addressing gang violence and youth guidance. Our youth are being drawn into gang culture due to a lack of positive role models and economic opportunities. I would like us to discuss ways to mentor young men, job opportunities, and promote peace within our community. The second scenario is about strengthening our marriages and parenting. Marital strife and ineffective parenting are leading to high divorce rates and poorly guided children. We will just explore strategies to improve communications, financial management, and parenting skills, fostering strong families. The third scenario is Resolving um, ideological conflicts, the different school of thoughts within our community have led to ideolog um, ideological conflicts. We will seek to understand these differences, promote mutual respect, and identify common goals to unite our community. Fourth scenario is about building homes and establishing a community. We have acquired, um, we have the ability to acquire land and to build a self-sustaining community. This discussion will focus on planning, resource allocation, um, sustainable living and governance to create a thriving Torah-centered um, adherent community. The fifth scenario is preserving elders' teachings. As our elders pass away, their invaluable teachings risk being lost due to a lack of record keeping. So we will, um, we will develop methods to record, to record, achieve, and transmit these wisdoms to future generations. And the last one is navigating political tensions. Political differences are causing divisions within our community. We will explore ways to foster respect, dialogue, promote unity, and guide political engagement in line with 12 principles. As men and leaders, it is our responsibility to address these challenges, these challenges with wisdom, integrity, and a commitment to the well-being of our community. By engaging in these discussions, we will aim to promote unity and peace, foster strong families, preserve our heritage, build sustainability, and guide righteous engagement through these discussions. And the implications of the solutions we devise, we will strengthen our community, uphold our values, and ensure bright and unified futures for all members. I know these is not us answering the world problems in one night. I know that's not possible. But we have to start somewhere and just having a conversation 
with one another on areas where we can improve that can help as being um, trendsetters in this path that we're trying to do, which is to promote solutions to our community so we can pass on a better foundation for the generations to come. And it all starts with us. It all starts with conversations like these. So I see that we have eight people on the line, um, including myself. Mm -hmm. I know that there are some people that may not be able to speak. So if you can participate and put a message if possible, I would greatly appreciate it because everybody's voice is important. And that's why I wanted to do more of a discussion than a lesson because I believe a discussion helps us all get put in our input and in, in these and the creating these solutions in order for us to have a healthier nation. So um, before I go with scenario one, do anyone have any questions or any uh, need any clarity and um, what we're going to be doing this evening? You can raise your hand or you can come off mute. Okay, I'll take that as no one has any questions. Okay. Uh, uh, no, oh, sleep, uh, repeat your the question. Okay, yeah, I was saying um, before we begin, I was wondering if anyone had any questions or needed any clarity on, on anything that I said. No, I'll keep, let's rock and roll. Okay. All right, so the first scenario, which is addressing gang violence and youth and guidance. Okay, um, I'll definitely um, do that. Um, give me one second, um, Maury. Let me take care of that real quick. With my zone, here you go. All right. Um, if possible, um, well, maybe I can do it. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Recording in progress. All right. Copy. If give me one sec. I'm just trying to put the post the scenario into the trap um to chat. So as I put it in the chat, I'm actually going to read the background of the scenario and the, and the objective. So in a, predominant, in a predominantly Black community, there have been a significant rise in gang violence. Many young men are being drawn into gangs due to a lack of positive role models, economic opportunities, and a sense of belonging. This has resulted in increased crime rates, broken families, and a sense of hopelessness among the youth. The community is seeking guidance on how to address these issues and promote peace, unity, and prosperity, according to Torah. So that is the background. And here we go. Copy. Do it from another device. There we go. Mm 
Uh, so I did put it in the chat. So the objective So the objective is uh, for leaders call aim to discuss, judge the scenario based on Torah principles, providing solutions that can help guide the youth and reduce gang violence. The goal is to create a plan that can be implemented without within the community to force a positive change. So the first discussion point is the role of fathers in male role models. The question is, how can the men, how can we as men in the community step up as role models? What programs or initiatives can be established to mentor young men? So now we'll open the floor up to the question again is, how can men, especially us in the community, step up as role models what program or initiative uh, or initiatives can be established to mentor young men? You can raise your hand um, if you'd like to go first. So like, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to raise my hand, but I don't know if y'all can hear me. But um, hey, I, 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 okay. So um, I don't know if everybody, I don't know if everybody knows that um this topic and this scenario um I'm very familiar with because um. I actually was um, drawn into and affected by it for for, for a first example because one, yes, I'm a I'm, even though I'm a security guard at my school. Yes, to protect the students, the gray area is. They don't tell you that when you're a security guard, you become a a father, you become an uncle, you become a mentor, you become a, I'm a football coach like I am. And a lot of kids, I could say about a handful, and I'm talking about the black kids, because in my school, it's in a nice area, but a lot of the kids that's, when I say my kids, come from like the Rip Rap area, the downtown, um, Newport News area, you know, the rougher side of the tracks. And the blessing of it is, um, I knew some of these kids from when they were six to now they're in my high school on my football team. To um, talk on that matter, yes, the gang violence is real. They don't call it bloods and crips no more. It's just straight up cliques. And what I see what happens is most of these young men who click up, there's no father in the house. And if there's no fathers in the house, it's a single mother. And if it's a single mother, they either on dope or they fast. The mothers are fast and street. There's no type of, like you said, male role guidance. Okay. So on just on that part alone, with the gang violence, we know that these kids are coming from a non-male house role. There's no male. And not only there's a male, they might have a male influence. They don't have a righteous male to get, guide them in a righteous way. Now, yes, I get it. I'm not in the school wearing my fringes, standing six foot three tall and looking like a mighty Hebrew, but the words that come out my mouth have to line up with Torah. And I give these kids Torah examples, like you are a man, this is how a man conduct himself. This is how you must carry yourself. This is how you carry yourself around teachers, or this is how you carry yourself around women, or excuse me, ma'am, or, you know, little things, or like if they on the team, I give them life morals. Yeah, and I throw some scripts at them to get them through painful times. So what I'm saying is in the black communities, is this is going to take a lot of male involvement and we as Israelite men, and most of us are fathers or elders or whatever have you, we just have to take the initiative because I don't have to do what I do. I don't have to be in, you know, visiting the parents and taking some of these kids home or go to McDonald's and, you know, I'm not like, no, but go to the 7 uh, Eleven, give them a snack, a peanuts or something because I know they're hungry and they just act out because they don't get that attention. And what I do notice is once when they do see that attention 
given to them, it go from that's a security guard or no, no, that's Unc or no, that's Coach Dave or no, man, that's my guy. And what happens is the kids just start to flock around you because they see how you take care of one. And then the touch second one comes and you get a you get a name for yourself. You see what I'm saying? But as, as me and I talk to myself, I have to be consistent with it. I just don't stop at one because guess what? A new freshman coming up, that's in a game. A new eighth grader that's coming up, that's in a game. Or a, a tenth grader that's got jumped. Or it's it's always something I and I praise the most high for the experience that I'm getting at the high school because yes, that's the most pivotal time of the young black man's life, you know, and a lot of moms will come by and thank me and say, hey, what have you been doing to my son? He listening or he passing or he graduating. So just to nip it in the bud, who, whoever is on the call, wherever you are, if you you got some type of influence in the, in, in the hood somewhere or, you know, and you know, that you know, we talk about areas or, you know, that kids ain't look, sometimes you just got to put an act of, of love for the act of or a good motive on one person and let's keep building and building that bridge. And then what happens is more and more people are gonna see you, men on the outside, and you could develop a little a little circle in your community and have a sit down and say, hey, we need to have a barbecue for these kids. Or we just have to sit down for these kids. Cause nine times out of ten, these kids are acting out, they hungry, they need some focus, they just need some attention. And it's a man strength, guide leadership, and I and I yield. Dang, hallelujah. I appreciate you um coming out and, and bringing that forth because it's the truth. My Abba, he's a football coach. And when I'm on the phone with him, he'll tell me how a mother would give him a call and tell him, hey, come pick him up. Because I'm going to strangle him. I'm going to kill him. And then my pop will go to the house. He'll pick him up. He'll, you know, they'll go to the gym or he'll take him someplace to eat. And they'll talk. And then the the the, the young man will unpack so much. And it's like some of these young men, they have so much within them that's holding them back from being great. So they fall in line to what everybody else is doing because they want to feel accepted. They want to feel a part of something. But in all actuality, there's something else that is going on in their lives and they feel like they can't be honest with their peers because they don't want to be looked at differently. So they act out instead, instead of being able to speak up about what they're going through so they can get the help. And sometimes it's hard to speak to just your mom and your dad's not there because you would think that your mom don't understand because as young men, we've been there. We've been through some certain things where if we had a father, we were able to talk to him about it, and he was able to give us some guidance. But like myself, when my father wasn't there because he was um, locked up for the first 20 years of my life, you're seeking some type of male um, older than you for guidance. And I can say I've been misguided because of the uh, males that were in my life and the things that they did teach me. But the validation of those men really meant something to me. And it made me want to be like them because they were giving me that type of intention. That's why it's important for us to take these things that we're learning in the Torah and passing it on to our children. But it's not just our children, but our children's friends, because they may not be in Torah households. They may not even be in Bible household. So we got to be able to be that example of what righteousness looks like, that we can make it attractive for them so they can look for it. Uh, we know in the Shema, um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, um, in verse 6 and 7, it says, And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. The importance of this is not just our children, but children in general, because if the most high place a child in your life, whether well, it be a child's friend, maybe it's a, a peer's child, it is our opportunity to show them what Torah is, show them what right ruling is, right judgment, what it is to be righteous men. 
upright men, good men. So it's important that we look at this thing and remember that we can't just use Torah at just face value because if I just say, oh, this is only telling me about my children, then any other child that comes into my life, I I'm not really caring for. But if I have a heart of the creator, it's telling me if all of us are the creator's children and he tells us not to vex our neighbor's child or have hate for our neighbor's child, then that means that we should try to show that love, that mentorship, that guidance to the to our the children, especially the young men, especially in these times that are, we're in, because we know they're killing us. We see it. It's, it's displayed on TV. It's displayed on social media. It's talked about on the radio. But if we're not stepping forward and stepping up, the only thing we're going to do is continue to allow this endless cycle to continue. And the younger generations is going to continue to fall behind. And we can allow that, especially if we call ourselves men of Elohim. So Toda, uh, I, for, you know, bringing out that, you know, that understanding and explaining the importance of us having these relationships, um, being mentors, being, like you said, fathers, uncles to these children who may not have those male role models or have positive male role models. So, Toda, I, and um, I do see um, Adon um, Yamiahu wrote. Father's presence is essential and or a positive male role model. Be respected, men. Be consistent with your righteous example. Show an act of love and continue to build. Do activities with the young men. Cookout came. We have to start operating in that in that fashion that we are inviting them into certain things. Maybe, you know, when we can have once a, a month, we can have the young men sitting on one of these men's poles. And we can have more conversations geared towards them so they can actually participate. But uh, get them to understand that this walk is not just something we do on the Shabbat, but there are conversations that are being done during the week as well. And here, just listen in, be a part of, because this will get them engaged as well and get them wanting to learn more and do more in the community. So, Tora, for I'm um, bringing that up. The second question that I have in regards to this. What can be done to create... Hey, hey, speaker, speaker, uh, uh, Don Ken. Yamiyahu had his hand up. Ken, go ahead, Aki. It's likely all praise to the Most High, to the Rabbi, um, Adon Azar Yahu, as well as Adon Dawi. Yeah, I was just basically just recapping some of the things that Adon Dawi was saying um, as far as what I put in the chat, just thought that we, they, they were very powerful. And I just want to just add one small piece. Um, as far as like a silent mentor, right? Um, you know, I lost my father at a very young age, at the age of seven. And um, was growing, growing up in a single parent home with my Ema and my grandmother for the most part. But my cousin Kokavia married a man, y'all may know him by the name of Saar Nehemiah. And he never actually took us under the wing and, and kind of gave us advice and insight. But what he did, he was that presence that we needed of a male figure being around. We saw him working hard, saw him being married. We saw him taking care of his responsibilities. And those things had a positive impression on our lives, as especially my life coming of age. So, again, our presence and, and doing things the right way because the children are always looking, you know, and that's why Don Dawi said, you know, the respect that he may that he gained from dealing with one of them, then the other children start to really take hold and they see, oh wow, this is something that is um, impactful in a positive way. So just those silent role models, I think that's important. And just in other words, just be that man of Yah at all times. So and because you just you just never know who's watching and how that may have an impact on their lives. So that. Dang, hallelujah. And so, you, interesting enough, I met Sar about five years ago, and I can understand exactly your, your, your sentiments because you were able to meet him at a young age, but even me meeting him in a, my older 
years. Um, I met him when I was 32, 33. And he's been a, a, a great pivotal part of my life as well, sharing the wisdom um, and the experiences that he has and being that great model. model. So it doesn't stop. It's not something that just you do for a couple of years here and there. And when when they grow up, you you kind of just let them know. It's something that is a constant and consistent part of that young man's life. Um, I have a, a mentor that I've known since seventh grade. And even though me and him don't talk all the time, he'll still reach out um, every once in a while. Or I'll reach out to him even now, 20, 30 plus years later. And he'll talk about the things that I've posted or he'll he'll say, oh, you have really grown up from that young man that I used to pick up from the house when your mom was trying to. He would do certain things and it made me realize that being a mentor is not a temporary thing. Being a mentor should be a lifetime thing. You don't have to be there constantly, but being there, putting allowing your presence to be known, like we said, he's been with some of these children since they were six. Now they're in high school. So that presence, that constant presence makes them feel safe and comfortable to know that there's someone that's still there for them, someone that still supports them. And that's why it's important for us to be able to be that same thing to the, the young men in our communities. So Toda, yeah. The, the next question of the scenario is, how can the community come together to address the issues of gang violence? What practical steps can be taken to promote reconciliation and peace among rival groups? So we know it's not just a blood and crypt thing anymore. There are cliques, there are people that do their blocks or do their part of the neighborhood. Uh, I remember there was a, a movie, I think it's called The Shy. I haven't seen it in years, but I know there was a part of The Shy where, you know, if you went to school and you had to walk to school, but they knew you was from a certain part of the area, you could have a problem when you cross that other path. So how can we um, address these issues of gang violence and what steps can be done? If anyone has their hands up in regards to this. I got, I got some I was going to implement on that. You know, when you, when, when these questions, when you ask them, these, can y'all hear me? Kane. Okay, so what, yes. what what vision that's Kane in my mind? It's close to it. I don't know if anybody's seen the um. How can I say? It? I don't know if anybody's seen the movie Lottery Ticket. Anybody seen the movie Lottery Ticket? So Kane, Ice Cube, Brandon Jackson, right? So Ice Cube was like the unk in the hood. You know, he came out. He had his kufi on. He had his hoodie on. And he always stayed to himself. But if y'all realize, no matter what, even though he was always to himself in that little attic, when he came out, the neighborhood knew him. Like, you know, whoever's beefing with whoever, they knew who he was. And I use that example because you know, we got these gangs now, just like they got negative gangs, positive gangs and you know, you're, you're breaking up Aki as I could get a test like can you, can you hear me now I'm okay, breaking you were up. breaking up at, you, you were breaking up at that last part okay um what these gangs or cliques need to see in certain neighborhoods the same way how we used to gather up in COI and the Step for the hood, and they would see about 50 Hebrews in the parking lot in garments. And what would they do? They would come drive them, like, um, oh, what is this place? Because you know, at around that time, there was all the black empowerment stuff going on. So they saw a bunch of brothers in garments and like people just get curious because why? They see something different, but at the same strength, whoever see a bunch of black men looking like they unified. Keep that in mind. Bunch of black men or sisters just standing outside looking unified in set apart garments. So that I'm just using that as an example when it comes to the how can we be a different these these cliques, gangs, or whatever, 
that's got to see more of that because look look who's doing it now. You got IUIC out here marching up 10,000 deep, whatever, and these people are getting, whoa, look at that. That looks so dope. I want to be in that army too. You see what I'm saying? So I'm just using that like presence. I feel that presence to start things in these communities would be, yes, a bunch of brews just gathering so they could see some different idea. Okay, I'm I'm glad you brought up IUIC because I I was going to touch on them. They do need to start seeing positive groups and organizations. You know, IUIC is one of those organizations that, despite how some people may feel about them, their presence is known and is felt because they do show up in large numbers. They do show up organized. And, you know, people see colors. So when you see that purple and gold, you know, sometimes I grew up, um, there was there was a, a, a gang called DMG, um, and their gang color was purple. And it was kind of confusing because they always rolled with the Crips and the folk. And I always thought purple which, you know, was red and blue mixed together makes purple. Um, so I thought it was about, you know, merging the group, you know, but then I found out that they did have people that were from Bloods and Crips, and they created their own thing based upon the block that they lived on, and that's how why they had the purple. Um, but it's not necessarily more about the gang colors, but it's called, it's the unity. If you know, I, I said this um a couple of weeks ago in the video. If we can have IUIC come together and march in 10,000, 100,000, you know, however many numbers they have strong, that shows a mighty force. But when we can show all the men of Israel walking amongst each other, men in different colors, because, you know, every, you know, certain camp got their colors then we know certain um, groups don't have colors at all. But when you see the men walking together in the name of Yah, that shows a force that can't be reckoned with. That shows how how many there, re that there really is, you know? And then we can start gathering and putting ourselves in certain positions where now people can be looking at us with more respect because now they're looking at us like they got it together. Now we can sit at the table and have discussions on the the problems that really matter and making a difference. We have to remember if we don't do something, it's going to get done one way or another. But if we're involved, at least we have the opportunity to be the voice of reason, the voice of righteousness, the voice of truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. These gangs, I grew up, and I was a part of it. I understand the the sense of belonging. I sense I understand the, you know, fast money and trying to, you know, have the latest and all this other stuff, that materialistic thing that people get joked on if you didn't have. It sounds good, it looks good, it feels good. But at the end of the day, when you see friends that you grew up with no longer here over senseless violence. When you see, you know, people locked away behind bars for years because of dirty dealings, you don't want to be a part of that. And then when you have children, you don't want your children to be a part of that. But, you know, Kendrick Lamar is a good example. Kendrick Lamar is not a blood, but he was what people would call a blood affiliate because his family was but he also said he had cousins that were Crips. So he had family members that was beefing. And they were, and it's because of where they're from. But he was the difference. He decided not to continue on and, and do what everyone else is doing. And that's the, these are some of the practical steps. We have to be able to get out there like the camps do. And maybe not you know, screaming loud and shout, but cook on the grill, you know, have have a, a, a community day where we're 
serving out food, we're playing music, we're, you know, and then we're having discussions, we're playing cards, and we're doing things for the youth to see what men are doing, how positive men gather, and how we share this world. That way it gets them more interested into becoming men like us because we have the opportunities that they're looking for, the mentorship we're looking for. We have these things. We just don't utilize them enough in order for them to know that we have these things. We have people that are business owners or people that have been at their jobs for a certain amount of time that they can, they have some type of influence that they can get these young men jobs or show them what they can do or take them as apprentices for, you know, trades and things of that nature. We have the necessary means to make a difference. But if we don't collectively come together and, 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 and you know, I know some people say you're not supposed to tell everybody what you're doing, but we got to be able to tell enough to let people know that we're doing something, that we're just not here just talking, but there are actually things getting done. Because the main goal is to take care of the community, to make it a place where our children can play outside and not have to worry about drugs, violence, sex, and everything else that comes under two years of what's going on. But if we're not opening that, that pathway in order to make it safe, then who are we waiting for to do it? We have to be the ones that start in order for them to be able to see, hey, I don't want to be here no more. I don't want to do this no more. I want to do something better with my life. Um, does anyone else have any um, statements that they want to bring forth before we go to the next topic? I, I just want to make sure I don't miss any hands or anything of that nature. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, say something uh, uh, in regards to what you're saying. I, I can't raise the hand for whatever reason. Um, uh, like you're saying, getting out in the community and actually doing something. Um, and I won't speak to any other groups or anything. You know, some things look good, but then, you know, uh, is it really good or is it just being seen for the camera? Whatever we do, it don't need to be for the camera. It need to be for the community. And like Big Guy we was saying, and Jeremy, I was saying, um, I don't Jeremy, I was saying, you know, about the certain role models, like if we out there, we're not out there just marching and, and we're not always doing street speakers because we, we have a time for that, but we also need to have a time, like you said, just go out and give back to the community and get out there. And like you say, whether we just grilling out and allowing them to come eat and, you know, we just being big brother or father like figures to them or positive role models where they can see we're down to earth, but we are actually not just marching through and not just uh, being seen because something took place but because we are present and we get on a consistent basis. So um, I'm in agreement with, with that. Like we we unify, we get out unified because a lot of times the only thing people look at Israelites is, is people on the street corners yelling. So instead of just always going out just to preach all the time, go out and get into communities and reach the people and actually, like you say, do something for them. Um, just like, uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my, my bot and my Ben uh, let me know that from the back to school drive that we did last year, you know, uh, we, uh, got out there we cooked hot dogs and stuff in the park we gave out school supplies and there was uh someone that went up to to them that remembered them from that that was from a family that actually needed you know needed some things and just the fact that you know th that did reach them you know that they actually became not necessarily friends with my yala dean but you know they were acquaintances like hey i remember you your, your parents was out there your church was out there they used the term church but they remembered that so if we do get out there and some of them children can see that and we just provide haircuts, we, you know, the, like just someone out there that may do lineups or whatever, just whatever we can do, uh, I'm, I'm all for us trying to organize something like that. If that's one of the solutions that y'all want to try to execute, I'm going to yield it this time. Toda, Toda, I'm already some up. I got one thing I can add to. Um, I know I told myself yeah. one thing I, that, that that's effective, that can be done. And I know everybody can sometimes, you know, you know, working in the school board, you get to hear about uh, town town hall meetings. You'd be surprised of the things that they talk about 
in the town hall that you can see yourself implementing and putting your yacht in it. Like sometimes, you know, they might be putting a petition like in Hampton and Buckrow Beach to start a, a, it's called a muscle beach, but put like a, like, you know, little adult workout park or whatever. Man, do you know how attractive that can be for some kids who I could just go out there and teach how to do pull-ups and calisthenics because I love fitness. You see what I'm saying? Or the, the town hall meeting will say, hey, we having, a, um, like like Maury Samak said, we having a, a feed the homeless day and da-da-da-da. You know how sweet that would look if a bunch of brews show up to the to feed the homeless day and help pass out bags to the homeless downtown or little stuff like that. You know, sometimes if you want to help, what I'm saying is we got to dig a little deeper. The same way we dig deep in the truth and we know we Hebrews and we keep studying to show ourselves approved. We got to use that same energy and that same fire when it comes to what's really going on in the community. Oh, I heard that they have some land for sale over here. Hey, we need to talk about this. Or, hey, they have an, um, a, a peace rally over such and such. Man, that would be a good thing to show up and see what they talk about this peace thing. You know, little stuff like that. But, yeah, when it comes to the – go to the libraries. The libraries and the schools tell you about a whole bunch of in stuff that you could you could go for free and sit with the, the people who – who make moves are you? Okay, told uh, I, the, the community outreach. I just read uh, what I don't know really who this wrote. Community outreach came. That should be a part of our ministry. Community outreach. What what we're doing is bringing the the word of Yah to life. Sometimes we forget that we read the pages, but are we bringing the pages to life? Are we becoming the living representation of the pages that we read? And I, I doubt we're going to be able to get through all the scenarios because of the time right now. But this is what I was looking for, um, engaging um, conversations to really discuss some of these things that are actually plaguing our communities and what are some things that we can do now, am I saying that all these are going to happen overnight? No, because it takes real strategic planning. It comes out with setting dates, um, um, raising the funds, and you know, actually preparing some of these things. But it all starts with the conversation, and that's what we're having. We're having the conversation on what solutions can we bring to help Re um help heal our communities, and I believe um what Maurice Samak is important. You know, um he mentioned like the the children remember his children because of what the ministry was doing, and they said it's a church, and you know what I'm gonna be honest. Words don't offend me. Some people ask me all the time, "What am I?" And I just say I'm a servant of the creator. But they say, what church you go to? Or, you know, what synagogue you go to? Or what mosque you go to? Because they don't know what I am. They just know that I have a relationship with the creator because of how I act. So they'll say certain things, try to, you know, be like politically correct. But it doesn't offend me. I don't feel like, you know, this is me personally. I don't feel correction is needed every time someone says something that's off because I know what it is that they're saying. I know what it is that they're trying to say. So if I want to gain their attention and to have them want to know more, I shouldn't do things to in order just to correct them because that can happen later on once they actually grow a little bit more. The main thing is for us to be able to be the, the 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 light that attracts them to this way and to remain that light that it may not hamper them in, in the or dampen their their walk later on because we don't want to become stumbling blocks. We want to be the lamp that lights the path by our acts of righteousness. So I appreciate these um 
these answers in, in this discussion because y'all are bringing out exactly what the Torah is saying, you know. And one of the questions I have, um, which I'm not really going to ask, but how can the community integrate Torah teachings into everyday life? What role can local religious leaders play in guiding the, the youth? That is that community outreach. That is that community outreach. That is that um, getting out there and allowing our presence to be known, not for the cameras, not to say, oh, we're doing this. No, but to do it for the sake of Yah, to do it to allow Yah's name to be esteemed. These are the things that we're supposed to represent. These, his word is what we're supposed to do. In Isaiah 58, um, I'm, I'm going to just read the chapter, but it says, Cry aloud, do not spare, lift up your voice like a ram's horn, declare to my people their transgressions and the house of your cold their sins. We we hear this a lot, and people use this to you know try to bring correction, but there's a, a more important message that happens later on, and it says um, verse two, yet they seek me day by day and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the right ruling of the Elohim. They ask of me rulings of righteousness. They delight in drawing near to Elohim. Why have we fasted and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our being and you took no note? Look in the day of your fasting, you find pleasure and drive on all your labors. Um, look, you fast for strife and contention and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You do not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his being? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and spread out um, sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast and an acceptable day to Jehovah? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? And now this is the solution. This is the rulings of righteousness that he's saying right here. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loosen the tight cords of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, to exempt the oppressed and to break off every yoke? I had a conversation with a brother. I was explaining to him. Sometimes we do things and it has the opposite effect of what it is that we are looking for. We should be trying to break the yoke that's upon people, not place one upon them. Sometimes we try to, and I'm not saying all of us, but we as a collective, we, we try to put things on people when they're not ready. Because we know it's good for them, but if they're not ready, it could be feeling like it's forced upon them, which therefore will make it burdensome rather than a delight. We're supposed to loosen, um, you know, wickedness. We're not supposed to add wickedness upon it. When you have sisters who have been in bad relationships time and time and time again, trying to find that sister or husband is not necessarily the first thing that we should be doing trying to make sure that she is healed and she is healed from all the um, soul ties and the trauma bonds that she may have occurred over the time. You know, having her being under the um, the wing of other sisters that and, uh, under elders and, um, and under married women so she can grow to be the woman so then when the right man do come, she knows what she's looking for. But it shouldn't be rushed upon. We see some people like, oh, you single? Oh, you need to get a husband. Yeah, eventually. But we have to address the reasons and the concerns. These are the things that we have to do. Oh, you you single with children? Hey, I don't need to be your man to be a mentor in their life. 
I don't have to be your husband in order to, you know, take them under my wing and spend time with them because I know that you don't have a husband and they may not have a father figure or a, a positive male role model in this life. Especially if you're new into this walk and the men that you know in your life are not in this walk. These are things that we have to be willing to do, not try to, you know, find another wife or find a wife for someone else. No, we may have to be able to be protectors to be what a act is, a strong defense. You know, if we know a brother has some some issues with drinking, you know, we shouldn't make we should make sure that we cover that brother. When we know that brother's around, we don't bring the bottle out. We don't we 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 don't, you know, offer that even option because we want to protect our brother. We want to make sure that he is good. These are the things the Most High is looking for. He's looking to see if we are actually trying to do things to help people, help change people's lives and not doing things that can hinder them even further in, in the name of righteousness. Sometimes we have to be more delicate. Uh, Morris Samat talks about this all the time. When you're dealing with babes, you give them babes things so it's easy for them to digest. You don't give them the, the full course meal. You don't give them the feast. You give them the milk. You give them the porridge. You give them the, the things that they can digest. And over time, as they have built a better system, then you can start introducing other things. But sometimes in our zealousness, we, we want to just be all gun ho and we lose a lot of people in doing that. I have lost people along the way that I could have been more of an influence to if I knew how to properly bring forth the information. But because I was young, I was immature, I was a babe in myself. I was trying to give them everything I knew, not knowing that it would make them throw up. And throw up to a point like, oh, I don't like this. I don't want this. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste good. We have to be we have to be the thing that tastes good, not just you know physically by how we look, but spiritually and mentally on how it continues to affect. This is the importance of being righteous men. This is the importance of being upright or good men, men of Elohim. This is the things that the young men need to see. So as they grow up to be men themselves, they become better men than we are because we want them to be the men of the future. We want them to be the men of Elohim that is without blemish. And we take our blemish states because we have our blemishes. We have our, our battle scars. We have our, our um, hard lessons that we had to learn through our experiences. And because we have these things, we may not be the perfect picture of what righteousness is because of the flaws. But if we share our experiences with the youth and we help them navigate this path, that they don't go the same direction, that they don't make the same mistake, that they don't make these same choices, then we are contributing to a cleaner future that is without blemish. Men that, men that don't have the battle scars, men that have been covered by the spirit of the most high from their youth, men that are upright, men that can make a difference and a change because the spirit of Elohim is with them and is with them because of us men who are who have been in the trenches doing the legwork, building the foundation in order for them to have a platform to stand on and to shine their brightest selves. So I'm going to bring um, one last scripture and then I'm going to um, end it for now. Uh, but this is from Matthew or Matthew chapter 25. And it's going to start at verse 34. Then the sovereign shall say to those on his right hand, and, and just for a little background, the right hand are the sheep, the left hand are the goats. They were separated because they were together. And this is after he said he separated the sheep from the goats. 
and, and, and I continue. Then the servant shall say to those on the right hand, come and Baruch of my father, inherit the rain prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous shall answer him, saying, Adonai, when did we say you when did we see you hungry and we fed or thirsty and we gave to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and took in or naked and clothed? And when did we see you sick or in prison and we came to you? And the servant shall answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, in so far as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. He shall then also say to those, okay, and that's why, you know, that's at verse 40. And the reason why I brought that up, because everything we do, we have to remember the most high is in all of us. So when we're taking care of the widows and the homeless, we're taking care of the most high, the most high in them. When I was at the church, I had um, one of the pastors said something that really stuck with me. And I, I still take it to this day because I felt it's uh, one of those things that is true. He said, when you pray, and you pray back the words of the most high to the most high, he has to hear. He has to hear it because God listens to God. That That's what the pastor says. So he was saying that, when you when you pray him and you speak forth the word of Elohim in your prayers, it opens the ears of the creator because he knows his word. He knows what he has said. So if he said it, his word does not return back void. It's true. So he says these things and it has to be true. So when he says in his word, you know, to love thy neighbor as himself. Yes, it's good to say I love my neighbor. I love my brother. But it's better when you show love because love is an action. Showing love to your neighbor, showing love to the stranger, showing love to those in need. Because when you're showing love to them, that God spirit that's in you, that Elohim that is in you that is doing these things, that spirit of Elohim that's doing these things in you now starts to communicate with the spirit of Elohim that's within them. Because you don't know if you are answering their prayers. People may be shaking in their faith and they're praying. They say, God, I don't know what to do. I, I'm struggling here. And then the next thing you know, they see you and they work in a scenario as a waitress. And then you come there and then you bless them with a tip of $40. Or you bless them with a tip for $50 or whatever. And they say, oh, Thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. You told Aya that you were blessed enough to be able to do that because you answered their prayers. They were going through something and you were used to answer their prayers. And now their resolution in their creator is now stronger because you operated in the spirit of the creator. We have to operate in the faith of Yah in the word of Yah, in the truth of Yah, and in the spirit of Yah, not just sometimes, not just on the feast days, not on Shabbat, but every single day. So anybody that comes across us, they are having an opportunity to come across a servant of the creator. And as a servant, we have to be about our master's business. We have to be about what it is that he's looking for. And that is to be righteous examples. So when people see us and then we do something that is Yah centered and Yah filled, it fills their spirit to seek, to give thanks, to glory to the Elohim that we serve. And that's our mission. To be the change, to create the solutions, and to be the ones that brings the glorification to our Elohim. Because he shall be glorified throughout this earth. The question is, are we going to be the ones that help bring that glorification upon him? Or are we going to do the opposite and then make his name 
being used in vain because we are doing the opposite. We're doing wickedness in the name of Yah. We're becoming the stumble blocks in the name of Yah. That's not what Yah wants. He wants love to be the, the thing that rules over. And love doesn't mean we're yes men. Sometimes you got to say no out of love. Sometimes you have to judge righteously out of love, even if the person doesn't want to hear it or see it. But we have to do it in love because we have to be accountable and responsible for every soul that we interact with to make sure that their blood is not on our hands. So with that, I, I, my words of encouragement is think about some of the problems that you that we may see on a day to day, or think about this when the next time a problem come across. Instead of focusing so much on the problem, focus more on, yes, this has happened. Now, what are we going to do about it? What's the solution? And how can this solution not just be a temporary fix like a Band-Aid, but how can we surgically make sure that this doesn't happen again? What can we put in place that way now, if it does come across, there's a plan of execution to make sure that we mitigate the damages and make sure it doesn't happen um, to, to cause the same um, spiral that it happened when we first found ourselves in. Remember, the Most High is with us. His wisdom is with those that seek it. His understanding, his knowledge is in this book that we read. The answers that we need are here. But also, those answers will only come out the, off the pages when we start having the conversations and discussions and actually start creating plans in order for us to um, implement them so they can be more tangible. More but with that, I say toda ya uh, for the opportunity uh, just to come before you um, today. I appreciate the men um, that participated and, and gave forth. I pray that this was able to, you know, cause, you know, just a, a brief thought and how we look at certain situations that we see that we can um, be problem solvers and not just in our families' lives, but also in the community. And with that, um, if anybody wants to say anything, you can raise your hands or you can, if you can't raise your hand, you can come off mute. Yeah, well, I'm gonna uh, say uh, your heart is in the right place, Adon. This is a uh, good, uh, good presentation and, and thought provoking. Um, but I want to highlight one of the things that you were saying when you were saying that certain words don't offend you, which it shouldn't offend any of us. Um, in order to really do community outreach, there needs to be a training of. There needs to be a certain training that uh, I think many will need to have. Because because someone say what church you from a certain thing, we don't need to be out there trying to correct everybody on every little word that we don't use. You know what I'm saying? And and so many of us have gotten so overly wise that we correct people on everything and it, it actually is a turn off. Like, you know, some things that we understand what they mean when they say what church you from. So yeah, sit and offend any of us and we understand what they mean when they say it. So that you can be like, my assembly is, my connection, my whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can just say it, it is simply and just what, what we represent, you know. Um, so it's a lot of that, like with uh, behaviors and things like that, that we're gonna have to do uh, educating people too. Um, that so when we do do these things, there needs to be certain meetings held, uh, saying that we represent the Most High. We don't need to go out and give them a bad name. And I'm just speaking from experience, say because I've seen where we've gone out to either do immersions or we've done something in public, and because we're out there, the ones of us that's facilitating whatever we're doing, or we're the ones that's talking with the leaders of the community. And the other brothers that's present is the ones that people walk up to and brothers have said some crazy things and it's like we out there laboring trying to represent the creator but the comment from other Hebrews that's out there oh no it, you know they may give off the negative uh the negative they may be using you know uh just the foul profane language uh they just they just misrepresent because like I said they, the, the, the pridefulness that's in some of us so uh like you said the solution is we do need to get out here but before getting out here we need to let people know the standard and, and who we represent. And we're not here to represent ourselves, but to represent the most high. 
Um, and like you said, so that we can esteem his name. You know, we do it to esteem his name and understanding that we're servants and servants serve. And we're not out here to bolster the, you know, just down people. We're just out here to just be an example in the community. So I'm going to use it at that point and give others a chance to speak. And I may speak again later. Okay, hallelujah. Um, I do see that there's a hand raised. There's two hands raised. Um, Eliyahu. Shalom, shalom, Malkin. Um, great, great topic. Um, and how things are done. Uh, the details matter, the execution of it. Um, these these matters that you've brought uh, to the forefront uh, this evening, uh, they definitely need to be addressed, and how they are addressed has everything to do with success or failure. Um, one thing that comes to mind that, well, it's a couple of things that come to mind, and I'll be as brief as, as possible. Before undertaking any endeavor, the atmosphere must be affected before you initiate the action. And what I mean by that is much prayer and fasting must go before you proceed any action that is done. Because what we see in the natural is only the expression of what already has taken place in the more than natural, i.e. the spiritual. And when bands are loosened, burdens dropped, they are dropped in the spiritual first before they have their visible, natural expression of it having been dropped in the natural. That's one. The second thing that comes to mind is, and we've probably all heard this, uh, charity or love begins at home. In and amongst our assemblies, there are those that I'm sure are not in the best economic conditions uh, that could duly use financial help and sometimes an extra pair or two of eyes on a situation can open the door to success in someone's lives who have been struggling financially because not all people can handle themselves financially or know what to do or, I mean, for those that are accustomed to doing it, it's it's not even a second thought. It's, you know, second nature, as they say to you. But for those who haven't been taught it, which, Growing up, they may not have seen it represented before them in their parents because their parents always struggled. And certainly in schools, they aren't teaching um, financial wisdom and how to engage and operate therein. Uh, so what I'm saying is, and it may not be just finances, it may be other things as well. But before we start to look outwardly, Let's look inwardly and make sure that the house is settled, is the foundation is sure. Because once we begin to spring forth outwardly, we do so in fervency and in strength. So those are the two things that come to mind, along with uh, the things that have been presented here uh, this evening, which is a topic that must be uh, dealt with, in fact, if we are to be effective in the community. But remember, community is unity, but unity starts at home first, starts at the assembly first, and then works its way, its, itself or its way outwardly. I relinquish.
told us I came. Um, I greatly appreciate your words because this is this is how we engage. You know, we have to look like you said, look inwardly. I can't be a, effective outwardly and in the community if my household's not in order. I can't expect to do things for other children if I'm not doing the certain things or I have a bad relationship with my own. So I greatly appreciate um, adding in that extra word um, so we don't forget why we're doing this. We're doing this to keep our families safe. We're doing this to keep our families protected. So we have to make sure that our families are protected first and also um, so we don't get too ahead of ourselves before we jump the gun. So Toda, um, Zakane, it's a lot for not acknowledging that Zakane at first, um, that that was on me. But uh, I appreciate you very much. Um, but don't you know, I hold the floor, yours. Hallelujah. Toda Rabba. For those words, <clears throat> timely, you know, um, just to kind of put the icing on the uga for the presentation that my brother Zara Yahu did, did such a marvelous job to that Yah for your spirit, putting on your spirit to discuss what we discussed this evening. So again, Zakwin Eliyahu for bringing up the fasting and putting y'all in the matter, you know, before we go out to try to make these changes. You know, one thing the children of Israel always did, as we spoke about unity, you know, we built the Mikdash, you know, the Ohel Moed in the in the wilderness. And as the presence of Yah, the Shekinah of the Creator, was coming among us, he said, All right, I need y'all to come together tribe by tribe, you know? So he had those families together and he had the tribe on the east side and west side, north side, south side. And, and when the horn was blown, we knew that it was time to move together as a unit, you know? So it's evident that we have the capacity to do it. It's going to be needed. But again, that presence of the Most High has to be there in order for us to really accomplish those goals. And one thing I wanted to mention, in addition to everything that you spoke about, for us to really try to implement these things, we have to have a heart of compassion. You have to really see that there's a need for change. And I thank the Most High for blessing us with a level of consciousness that we're able to see it. Unfortunately, a lot of our brothers is, are still in that choshech, darkness right now, and they think everything is all right. Or they think the strip club culture, or the, the culture of the streets, and you know some of the influence through the music is is really where it's at. And I know that we have to bring forth another type of energy. You know, I think the most often even the souls, a lot of these men coming with music now. To glorify Yah, this is this is great because it's causing a shift. Um, one thing I just want to keep in mind is authenticity, right? Just be genuine and real with the changes that you're trying trying to make. Think about Moshe, you know, in, in his history and how he grew up in the palace with Pharaoh. And people will probably look at his life and be like, man, you have everything that you need in the palace and not out here slaving with the rest of the Hebrews and you, you're able to do, but his heart was for the people, you know, even to the point where he saw the Egyptian mistreating the Hebrew that he took matters in his own hand and took that Egyptian out, you know, and it, that type of Ruach is needed to really help us bring forth the change that is required. One of the things that you did not speak about tonight, but Zakwan Eliyahu, and you just touched on it as well, which I really feel is the nucleus, is the Mishpaka, the family, and the family really being in order. Again, that respect will be there when people see that you respect your wife and that you are 
raising your children in a way that is allowing them to grow up in an environment that they will be able to grow and be able to discern the difference between what uh, a righteous lifestyle should be like and being able to recognize when they see the strong influence of the other side that's happening in the world. I see it in my body. You know, my boys are young, but, you know, they, you know, sometimes throwing up signs with their hands and, and I, I check them right away, but then I understand that, you know, they're going to be exposed to these things, but I want to make sure I always show them, you know, that y'all like side. And just one last thing I would like to say, as we spoke about not correcting people and, you know, people may think we're part of churches and stuff. And I swear, I believe that so many people in my job probably think I'm a Christian. It's crazy, you know, but I look at it as such a compliment that, I really feel like the creator is allowing me to to be a light. And I'm I'm in the bank. I'm in corporate, you know. And the most high has blessed me to, you know, I mean, they say people like, you must be a pastor or something. And, and I'm not, you know, doing any of these things. Yes, we have our call to the brothers and we teach and we do things of that nature. But I really think it's the, it's the spirit that the creator has put on me. And I pray that he'll continue to put that spirit upon us if we truly have a desire to, to make these changes that we're striving to make. So Torah Rabbah for the thought-provoking um, message tonight and being able to have the dialogue. It was a pleasure just to hear the words of, of my brother Dawid. Can't put a face on the name or even Zach Queen um, that just spoke. But let's just feel y'all. Ruach, your spirit. So that's just as powerful. You know, as I could put a face on Maurice Shamak, you know, when he speak, but just thanking the most high for the for the discussion and, and the brotherhood really coming together this evening. And I yield to what I about. If you see my face, I you definitely know exactly who I am. Trust and believe. And you gonna lie. <laughs> I <yield. laughs> <laughs> well, I know you. Man, I know you said the seven five seven. That's definitely my hometown, and the COI definitely came out there fellowship with my brothers quite often. But so luckily, I apologize. But hopefully, very, very quite oh, you've, seen, you've seen, you've seen, if you've seen COI, trust and believe. You see me. You you spoke in my face. We sat at the same table. You're breaking up, Aki. You're breaking up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, Aki. Aki, is there anyone else? Uh, I see another hand. Um, is Aki and Eliyahu? I see your hand is raised again. Yes, sir. I just want to uh, say to uh, Aki Yamayahu, keep doing what you're doing because you are a light in the place that you are placed in. And there are those that are there that are attracted to that light that will be called out of the darkness. So continue to do what it is that you're doing and watch that happen. Watch it come to fruition. I can't help but do it. So I just want to continue to encourage you. Continue That's what to be the servant that you are. I really appreciate Hallelujah for the brotherhood. Hallelujah for, you know, the discussion. Um, prayerfully, um, if I have the opportunity again, um, I would definitely like to hear some of the other um, ideas and thoughts towards some of these other scenarios, or even if I can just put them in the chat probably throughout the week and we can just continue to build from there. But I do appreciate everyone's words of encouragement and of advice on some of the, um, building on creative solutions. Um, the most high didn't put us on this earth to just do nothing. Um, I I was reading and 
when I was reading um, Matthew 25, I, I, knew, I was having a conversation and I knew the verse I was looking for. So I had to say, oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. But then as I'm reading it, it was talking about um, the master giving the servants the talents. He gave one um, a certain amount of talents, gave the other a certain amount of talents, and he gave another one a certain amount of talents. And two of the three actually doubled with their portion, while the other one actually did nothing. And that one was told, was removed because they did nothing. We were not created on this earth to do absolutely nothing. We were not created on this earth to just, just be here. We were created with a purpose and a plan to bring more, to create more, to do more. That way we're not leaving this world the same way we came in. So we came in with nothing. But the accomplishments and the goals and the things that we achieve when we leave, that's what we're going to be counted for. So as we continue to walk this life, remember every day that you have life is a day that you have purpose. And it is our job to give purpose to the life that we have by doing something. I don't care if it's to give to the homeless, to be an encouraging word to somebody, to... um to write, to record, to, um, you know, be a mentor, whatever it is the most high place in your heart to do, do it. Don't be worried if it's going to fail or not. Don't be worried if it's not, it do, if it doesn't look the way you think it should look. Just do it. And watch the most high get the increase at the end of the day. So if the spirit is telling you, and I, and I believe me and Zakane had this conversation at the Sukkot, uh, when the spirit tells you something, do it. Not knowing what the results is, not knowing what's going to happen from it. Just do it and see where and see where it takes you. Because sometimes we we hear the spirit. But then we go against it because we question if it's of Yah or not, or if it's really the spirit, or if it, we get in our own heads. Allow the Most High to guide us the way that He desires, and watch what comes from it. Take a leap of faith. Do something that you have never done before. Actually, give total control to Yah and watch him move on your behalf. So if you're seeking a job and you're scared of turning that application, turn that application in. If you're not if you're worried about going to school and you know not showing if that's something you want to do or if it's you're not sure what to do, apply. Don't be scared to change your life for the better. As long as you keep Yah first, pray on it, meditate on it, speak to Yah and say, "This, if it's your will, let it be so and go for it. Because as men, that is our goal, to create something new and beautiful in this world. We're supposed to be the representation of the creator. So he gives us things that we can create, whether it's opportunities, whether it's conversations, or whatever it may be. Utilize the spirit of Yah to bring the glorification of Yah. And with that, I yield, I ask, um, if um, Adon Yermiahu, if you are in the uh, capacity, can you pray us out? Hallelujah. Okay, I'm just going to put my Kelev up so I can get her right. Yeah. Dina. Dina, go eat.
Let you about eat dinner. Let you about eat. We are moving to the box. So lucky. Hallelujah. Ya El Yom, Melaka Olam, Ubore et Hako de Vadi, Unatatalanu Hakayenu, Halala Haze, Baruk Shem Kedvod, Le Olam Wa Ed. O great King, we beseech thy faith, and we humbly seek thee at this time to give you thanks for your love and kindness, for your great mercy and your wonderful compassion for the ability to call upon you at this time, even in the midst of our brothers, O Yah. We thank you, O great King, for allowing us to have our brotherhood meeting tonight, our discussion. As we focus on ourselves, focus on our communities, focus on our family, but most importantly, focus on you. We ask that you will lead us in thy truth and thy righteousness, and that you will give us the strength that we need to carry on. Help us overcome any fears that we may have, O great King. Help us rise above any trial or tribulation that we may go through. And we ask that you will even put your Ruach Kodesh even upon us. And that you will give us the Kazakh that we need. That we can stand strong. And even meet the challenges that stand before us. Allow us to represent you in the right way. To represent you in a way that will bring honor and glory to thy name and respect and dignity once again to this nation. Help us establish righteousness once again, O Yah. Remove evil far away from us and from the things that's not right and pleasing before thee, O great King on our. Teach us thy ways that we may walk in thy light and in thy truth. I thank you for even blessing our brother Azari Yahoo this evening to bring forth thy word, even thy word of truth. We thank you for all the Achim and the Zachwinim and all the Anashim who spoke up this evening, O Yah. And for those who may have even spoke within their heart, who may not even utter a word out of their lips, O Great King, we ask that you will add a special blessing unto them as well. Remember the brothers who are unable to make the call. Remember those who may be sick, those who may need thy healing, O Great King. We pray that you will put your hand upon them and heal them, O Yah. Lead us in thy path of truth. And show us the way. We glorify and we praise thy name. For you are great and highly to be praised. So wonderful. So marvelous. So magnificent art thou. And you have been mindful of us. Thy people. Am Ka Yisrael. Baruch Shem Ked Vod. Le Olam Wa Ed. Yehoah Zeva Od. Melech Ha Olam. Elohe Avraham Yitzchak with Yisrael. Baruch Hata. When Mizrach Hashemesh wa Ad Mevo'o, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, may thy name forever be magnified. Giving you all the praise and the honor, now and forevermore. Hallelujah. 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 Say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Akim, oh, those yeah. Of you yeah. who have not seen the mug, uh, please forgive the um, transmission and the um, uh, the mechanical failure of your devices that may ensue there afterwards. So I apologize, but here it is. Look at you, I can't get to see your face, I can't <laughs> get to see you get the rouse, I can't get to see you get the rouse, sir. You look well, hallelujah. Man, most I had a special blessing into upon you. All right, I can love you, brothers.